Hi everyone, it's John from What Up, and welcome back to another video. I've sat down with actor and artist Kenneth Stewart Moore and talked to him just a little bit about his time on the Wheel of Time set. Now, he did recently do an article where he talked about being an extra in Season 2, Episode 5, so I tracked him down, asked him a bunch of questions, and he did answer. Now, these are all over email, so I'm going to have to read them off to you folks. However, he was uh, pretty wary about some of the things he answered, but he did give us a little bit of information, and that's what we're going to discuss today. So, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what we do here, we cover Wheel of Time show news. So, anything and everything to do with the Wheel of Time production that's currently filming Season 2 in Prague in the Czech Republic, that's what we cover here. So, if you like Wheel of Time content, make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell because we put out a ton of Wheel of Time content all the way up to and including when Season 2 drops. And then we're going to break down every single episode in Season 2, just like we did for Season 1. So, you're not going to want to miss all of the news. Now, make sure you tune in this Wednesday. We have a special What Wednesday News Edition. And I have an announcement later this week for something special that may fill some of the gaps between now and the drop of Season 2 of Wheel of Time. Now, all of that being said, before we get into the video, I would normally do a spoiler warning, but we're really not going to spoil a whole lot, but maybe, just maybe, some smidges of Season 2. So, spoiler warning, in this video, we're talking with an extra who is on set in Season 2, Episode 5 of Sony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show, so if you don't want anything spoiled at all, before Warren, we'll probably talk just a smidge about that, but no plot points, no character arcs, and nothing terribly important will be given away. All right, all that being said, let's get on to the video. So Stuart Kenneth Moore is a Scottish actor and artist. Now, he is well-known in the comic book world and has done a ton of different work in the comics, uh, everything from Judge Dredd to his own original MK Ultra, Sex, Drugs, and the CIA, and he's a really good artist. He's fantastic, actually, and I've left links to some of his work down below in the description box if you folks want to click that and go check it out. Now, he's also an actor, so he's been acting for a number of years and mostly in day roles or extra uh, roles, things like that, uh, but he has had a couple of speaking parts, um, and you probably know him from Narnia. Uh, he was in The Lord of the Rings. He was also in Nightfall. He was in a ton of different things because he is an accomplished horseback rider, and that is one of the big draws for having him on set is because he already knows what he's doing when it comes to horses. So... Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I did ask him a couple of questions. I'm going to read them off here to you um, because he obviously couldn't zoom in, but he did answer these over email. Um, so the first one I asked was, is this a recurring role or a one and done? Now, remember in the article, he mentioned that he was in season two, episode five. Uh, he said, just one episode. I can't say anything about the episode, but the role came about due to another role in Prince Caspian, Narnia, that I had many, many years ago. In that production, I spent three months on horseback, mostly at a paddock on the studio back lot with a trainer, usually with my teacher and pal Juan Diego Montoya. With this kind of horse training for camera, you can ride into the shot, step on a mark to deliver a line, move to another mark, and so on to keep it looking natural and composed on the horse. Well, hopefully. It's subtle, it's subtle, doesn't look very dynamic, but it works in camera. For Narnia, we trained in military riding formation, turning in a group, that kind of thing. It can be hard enough as an actor landing your mark on your own two feet. Uh, thinking you can ride a horse because you've been on one is a little bit like thinking you can drive a car because you've been in one. Um, so I asked him next, do you have, are, you, are you a featured extra? Do you have any lines? And he says, no, I'm a character actor, but what is described as a day player in the industry. I generally do small speaking parts, usually no more than a week on set. Lines usually set the distinction between an actor and an extra, but it's finer than that. The distinction comes down due to emotion. Believe it or not, I was once hired as an actor to simply express an emotion. That was for Borgs, and I had to appear surprised. So I get paid to look surprised, and... I love that I can put that in my CV. So he's he's kind of funny. I do do like this man a lot. Um, I, I I'm kind of wondering what role he's in. So he's on horseback. He's in season two, episode five. Featured extra military riding training. Uh, I'm thinking maybe we're going to see some sort of battle, and he might be a white cloak. That's my guess anyway. Um, where did you film? Which area? He says, we shot in the Czech Republic. I think I'm safe to say that at least. I don't think it's a secret. The cast have popped up on social media at Prague's tour site, so the whole world knows they are here. Uh, he said, I must say that COVID put an end to filming here and I'd all but giving up and acting again. I'm an artist and I draw all the time, so COVID isolation has been easier on me than most people. So I've gotten quite used to the routine of drinking my coffee and drawing all day. He likes the quietude. But all of a sudden, it was like there had been no break in my filming work, no isolation, no indoors life, and I was riding a beautiful horse in the cold air. There can't be anything more liberating than feeling that after all this restriction. It was a very welcome experience for me and that freedom alone. I didn't think I needed it, but I obviously did. Um, so, because of that, I asked him, what COVID protocols are Sony and Amazon taking during filming? Are they special, or are they just kind of industry standard? 
He said, I have to hand it to any production working today. They are all incredibly careful. The added logistics COVID responsibility brings makes an already difficult job a much greater logistical problem, but you wouldn't know it. It's business as usual on all the productions I've seen if masks and multiple tests and airlocks can be considered usual. In this era, the film set is maybe the safest place of business in pandemic terms. I'm used to it now, but my first experience of COVID on set was for a vampire film on Netflix about a year ago. They were very careful too, but it was otherworldly from the get-go. Some hazmat suited persons stopped my driver on arrival to give me a temperature check. I wonder if they were film extras or real nurses. Was it the vampire virus or COVID they have that for? It was odd then, but it seems second nature now. So it does seem like Sony and Amazon are taking all of the necessary precautions for COVID, which makes sense. I mean, pretty much every industry is. Um, and I do know that speaking with some of the cast uh, and, and other crew that have worked on season one after the break for COVID, they were required to test before going in, isolate, test again, uh, multiple tests during filming, just to make sure everybody's safe. It sounds like all those protocols are pretty much still in place. All right. So the next question I asked him was, who did he film with? Of course, we all want to know who he filmed with. And as expected, he came back with, nope, sorry, I can't answer that one. Keep an eye on IMDb. They'll post a cast list once it's released. So I said, how was the general feeling on set? Were people happy? Were they burnt out? And he said, I've worked on mainly Czech and foreign productions. I don't think I've worked with any set that had no Czechs. There always are a great team. Excellent. Typically upbeat and committed. It's the same good humor and boundless energy that we've come to expect of Czech crew here. Or the mix of local and foreign crew. It never fails to amaze me how committed and good-humored people in film generally are. It's not easy work by any means, and it doesn't matter how early or late your shoot is, guaranteed someone is already there setting things up for you or waiting to shut things down when you leave. I think your own attitude is important. If you win committed to make it easy for those who are working with, it should be a good experience. Some years ago, I worked on something starring Donald Sutherland, and I was told he left a great impression with the crew. That's the way to roll. So I try to keep that in mind and make it easier for my colleagues. Now... Everyone I've ever talked to uh, attached to the production in any way, shape, or form, whether it be cast or crew or anyone else, they've always had the same thing to say, that everything was great. People were happy. Everyone seemed to enjoy what they were doing. The work was hard, of course, as filming usually is, long hours and difficult, but morale was really good. Um, that's not always the case. My cousin's an actor, and he recently started something with Adrian Brody. Now, he was on screen with Adrian Brody for maybe three or four scenes and he had a couple of lines with them and uh it didn't go so well uh people on set were not allowed to talk to mr brody when he was there uh and he was a little bit surly <laughs> so i guess it depends on who you're working with and what's going on much like uh much like kenneth is saying here so then i asked were you aware of the book series prior to filming he said i've heard of it but i've not read it i'm a graphic novelist or comic book artist and i work all day on my own book project mk ultra sex drugs and the cia so he gave me a couple links here and I put them down below for his book. Uh, there's the book where you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, there's a video review down below and there's also the publisher. Uh, he also has another graphic book novel uh, called The Tragedy of Macbeth. I left a link to that down below in the description box. And he also has done some drawing for 2000 AD, Britain's legendary science fiction anthology. Uh, in fact, he's the cover artist of the Dutch Red one we showed you earlier in the video. Again, a link to that is down below in the description box. He said he, deep down he feels he has too much of his own fiction to tend to. It's so demanding of his time that he cannot read or watch anyone else's fiction. If he's alone, his mind soon turns to my own fiction and I switch off and go draw. I can watch with friends and family, but not if I'm alone. I watch documentaries. I can watch them until the cows come home. The last fantasy book I read was Lord of the Rings and it was a good while ago. I will tell you this though, I did enough reading the Wheel of Time to know who and what my character was and what kind of an era and world he lives in. So that's really good to know. Now, if he did a little bit of reading in the books to, to get a feel for his character, and um, he was kind of like a day character on set for a little bit. Uh, he's only in one episode, season two, episode five. We know some of the plot lines are going to happen in season two. My guess, again, I said this earlier in the video, is he's probably a white cloak or maybe a dragon sworn. One of the two. Um, that's my feeling here because I think we're going to see a massive amount of white cloaks on horseback for season two uh, because leading up to the end of season two, I think we're going to get the events of the tail end of the Great Hunt. It's my guess anyway. So lastly, I asked him, is there anything else you can tell us about season two? Of course, I'm fishing for absolutely anything we can get out of the man. And he came back with saying, I can only tell you that I can't tell you anything about season two. That's all I can tell you. And he gave me a big happy face. Uh, oh, wait, there is something I can say. It's cool and it's coming and it's filming now. Get ready. So... Of course, we know they're filming now. Uh, Wattseries.com has previously reported, and I, I think I've said it a couple times too, filming is probably up to and including the end of February or early March before they finish. And that's if they don't have any pickups or reshoots or other things going on. And then there's post-production after that. Um, now, of course, we do know that Priyanka Bose kind of slipped up a little bit and said that the show is coming mid-something. People thought maybe it was mid-year. I don't believe that. 
not for a second, I think we're probably going to get it at the earliest, the same time as last year, mid to late November. Um, although there have been some rumors that we may not get the show until early next year, and that's mainly due to Lord of the Rings and the post-production timeline. But again, all rumors, all conjecture, nobody really knows when Season 2 is going to drop. And in fact, there's been almost zero official news out of production in Amazon and Sony since the end of the you know first season. So the last episode dropped Christmas Eve. After that, there were a few things from Rafe, a few things from Sony and Amazon, just kind of hyping it up a bit. And then they've been pretty quiet since then. Uh, there's also been very, very few leaks. So we know almost nothing about the second season at all, other than the few little tidbits that WattSeries.com has been able to come up with and a couple of things my sources have told me, which haven't really been a whole lot. But we're very eagerly waiting the end of filming because I'm kind of hoping that once things get to post, we'll get a few more leaks, some more talking, and perhaps some official castings because, of course, they have to give us something before the beginning of Season 2. All right, so that's all I got for you for today for this interview. I do want to mention a couple of things, though. I mentioned it in the very first of the video. There is something special coming at the end of this week uh, to fill the gaps in between now and the beginning of Season 2 of The Wheel of Time. Um, and it is not specifically Wheel of Time related, at least not fully anyway. Uh, for me, it'll be a lot of fun. I'll announce that probably Friday or Saturday this week. Um, and I hope you folks enjoyed as well. Um, it's, it's, you know, I have a good time doing this and it gives me something else to do that I enjoy and have fun with. Uh, so you'll have to wait to see about that. Uh, also, uh, if you folks want to support me on Patreon, the link is down below in the description box. Uh, if you want to get some cool one-up swag, that's the best way to get it. I don't really have a store yet. Uh, but if you want stickers and magnets, keychains, t-shirts, things of that nature, through my Patreon. Uh, I do also occasionally post videos there, early 24-hour access. It doesn't happen very often, especially now when there's not a whole lot of stuff coming out. Although that may change early next week, you'll probably start to see more stuff from me posted on Patreon before I post it live, uh, because most of it now isn't time-sensitive anymore. Of course, news and interviews and things like that are usually pretty time-sensitive. They come out and people want to see them right away, and if I release them early, then you know it might spoil it for some people. But I'm going to be doing things that aren't time-sensitive at all in the next coming weeks and months, and that'll be posted on Patreon more and more often before it goes live on my channel. So make sure you check that out. All right, thank you all very much for sticking with me here to the very end, and here's to many more.